A lot has happened in the world of Linux in the last week, and I want to bring you up to date as well as talk about some of these exciting developments. As I've been following Cosmic, the Rust-based desktop by System76, the team at System76 has announced the new brand reveal. And with that brand reveal, this week we've officially gotten some brand new news from none other than Carl Rochelle saying that their in-development Cosmic desktop is looking beautiful. And it sure is. I've, I've been bringing you videos in this desktop development for the last two years. And I got to say, from using it myself, it is quite beautiful, but this isn't the big announcement. What the big announcement is, we have an official date for the first alpha release of Pop OS 24.04 with Cosmic. That's right, the release is August 8th. This is a post directly from the CEO and founder, Carl. And if you want to check out their podcast, you can join Jeremy, Maria, and Carl in this latest episode of the System76 Transition Log. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out as well. This is a highly sought after desktop environment and we are about to experience the alpha version. Hopefully I'm gonna get mine a little bit earlier so I can show off what the desktop is looking like and get my first thoughts out to you about the alpha release. I'm super excited as I've been following this for a long time, but let's get into some more news. It's not all about Cosmic and Linux, but another big thing is happening. After about two years ago, we had the official first NVIDIA releases open source GPU kernel modules. That's right, after everyone thought NVIDIA would never open source their drivers for Linux, we officially got word that they would begin development. Now that's not new news, nor is it anything special, as NVIDIA aimed to improve integration with Linux and enable an easier development and debugging by open sourcing their drivers. And I imagine from NVIDIA's perspective that the reason that they did this was so they can more seamlessly integrate their GPUs into Linux systems because Linux systems are really taking over the server space nowadays. So they've probably seen competitive pressure and in order to remain viable for the long term, especially with the boost of AI, they probably saw this coming and decided why not fully transition over to the open source GPU kernel modules. That's what this is about. And an announcement with the revision 515 driver, NVIDIA released a set of GPU kernel modules in May 2022, over two years ago, as open source with dual GPL and MIT licensing. The initial release was targeted towards data center compute GPUs with GPU force and workstation GPUs in alpha state. Like I mentioned a moment ago, targeted data center compute GPUs. Again, Linux can and will play a huge role in future development of AI and data centers for server and compute intensive modules. So it just makes sense from a business perspective. At the time that we announced a fully featured GeForce and workstation Linux support would follow in subsequent releases and the NVIDIA open kernel modules would eventually supplement the closed source driver. Two years on, we've achieved equivalent or better performance. And like I I was alluding to, NVIDIA GPUs share a common driver architecture and compatibility set. The same driver for you and your desktop or laptop runs the world's most advanced AI workloads in the cloud. It's been incredibly important to us that we get that just right. Of course it is because they don't want to be missing out on long-term viability and adoption. Open sourcing these drivers is going to allow for a broader community to identify and fix bugs, which may even benefit NVIDIA's internal support and development costs. But either way, what I want to talk about that I'm particularly interested about is this section right here. Two years on, we've achieved equivalent or better application performance with our open source GPU kernel modules and added substantial new capabilities. So what they're saying to us is that they believe they are on par with the current open source NVIDIA graphics modules and they've even added a little bit extra to it. So this is fantastic to hear about that they finally have caught up to what we had and hopefully we're gonna be getting even better support in Linux with our NVIDIA graphics cards, including heterogeneous memory management, confidential computing, the coherent memory architectures of the Grace platforms, and more. Whatever more means, but either way, rejoice as two years down the line, we are seeing new development on par with what we have today, and it's only going to get better. And we've been missing out if we didn't talk about CrowdStrike and the issues that it caused last week for a lot of Windows-based computers, and a developer from SystemD had something to say about it, Lenart here. So if you ask me about what my takeaway from the CrowdStrike issue is, I'd say boot counting, boot assessment, automatic fallback should really be a must 
must for today's systems before you invoke your first kernel you need to have tracking of the boot attempts and logic for falling back to older versions automatically it's a major shortcoming that is not the default behavior of today's distros in particular commercial ones of course system d has supported this for a long time and what lenart is talking about here is the automatic boot assessment system d provides support for automatically reverting back to the previous version of the os or kernel in a case where a system consistently fails to boot the bootloader specification describes how to annotate bootload entries and with a counter that specifies how many attempts should be made to boot it the document describes how to implement this scheme as we all now know about the crowdstrike update which led to system crashes including the blue screen of death particularly on windows computers seemingly all caused by a lack of quality assurance where bad code got pushed to many computers in the commercial space emphasizing the importance of not only stage rollouts for critical updates but also a way to be able to restore the system if something goes on and that's the point of this automatic boot assessment system d is already thinking about it let me know what you think about this in the comment section below do you know any company that was affected by the CrowdStrike outage i'd love to hear about it of course we needed to talk about it and why not get system d's take on it anyways i want to move on to the xz hack some of you will remember a few months ago a large security vulnerability was found in linux although it didn't affect many linux distributions it did show how malicious intent and maintainers could cause major vulnerabilities even intentionally pretty much using the trojan horse method or as quote unquote gia tan that's at least what they named themselves as a maintainer has been officially kicked out as a maintainer and their commit messages removed for the xz compression tools and utilities it took a while for the maintainers to actually remove all the code that had been submitted but it's good to know that gia tan has officially been removed from the maintainers list a lot has gone into this particular patch and update but i thought it'd be interesting to follow back up on that specific xz hack and an interesting person talked about the actual XZ hack and how it affected Linux. That's Linus Torvalds. Yes, the creator himself has talked about the XZ hack in a recent Linux Foundation conference. I'll post the link in the description below if you want to check that video out. Anyways, ARM64 allows installing compressed images by default now, but what does Linus have to say about this? On ARM64, we build to compressed images, but make install by default. We'll install the non, the old non-compressed one. To actually get the compressed image installed, you need to do make Z install, which is not a usual way to install a kernel which may not sound like much of an issue but when you deal with multiple architectures and years of your fingers knowing the regular make install incantation this inconsistency is pretty annoying of course Linus is finding something annoying here in how the build process happens for when they build arm 64 compressed images he doesn't want to use make z install he wants make install it's always funny to read some Linus lore let me know what you think about this particular gripe either way tons of news in Linux this week let me know if you enjoyed this video by smashing that like button for me and subscribing below for more videos like this. I'm glad to catch you up on Linux and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.